Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben. Nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more knowledgeable. You are more and more in control of your body, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it's designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the Bright Side and we welcome your calls. 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, you can call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can also purchase longevity products off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And, of course, you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a longevity business, help change the world, make some money at the same time, earn thank you checks, and work out of your home, right off your home office, right off your mileage, and help change people's lives. Make people happy. Make yourself happy. It's a win-win. And if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price, you can do that as well. All for a one-time $25 fee. Call 866-735-2470. Tell them you want to join the Brightside Ben team. Or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And I'd like to remind you as well to check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. Truth Transdermal Sea Serum and Truth Transdermal Sea Balm are now our Truth Biomimetic Mineral Mist, made with fulvic minerals, as well as high hyaluronic acid, lactate, and amino acids as well. All our Truth Treatment products are made without preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers. Nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. No oil, no silicon. You shouldn't have to pay for what you're not using. You shouldn't have to pay just so somebody can sell you a product. You shouldn't have to pay for a thickener. You shouldn't have to pay for a surfactant and an emulsifier and a wax and an oil and silicon when they're not doing anything for your skin. That's why I developed our Truth Treatment products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We have been talking skin. I've been in the skin business since 1983, formulating skincare products. We didn't know a lot about the skin in 1983. Our understandings of the skin really, really didn't get going until the 1990s, late night, uh, the beginning of the 1990s. It really, that, that's when we really started to understand that we could change the quality, the texture, the health of the skin. We could improve the quality of aging skin, the appearance of aging skin, the health of aging skin topically using ingredients. Before then, there was only one ingredient that would actually do anything, and that was retinoic acid and retinol. We've known about that one for a long time, since the 60s. But skincare didn't really get going until alpha hydroxy acids got out there. Alpha hydroxy acids, uh, glycolic acid, most people have heard of that. Glycolic acid was the first of the alpha hydroxy acid acids that came out in the 1990s. I shouldn't say it came out. It became known in the 1990s by the general public. It had been, a dermatologist had been using glycolic acid for many years, since the 60s, actually. I first, read, I first heard about it in pharmacy school. But it didn't really get going until the 1990s, and there certainly wasn't a lot of research on the molecular nature of the skin until then, on the real hardcore science about how the skin was put together from a molecular standpoint, from a cellular standpoint. That's all recent stuff. 
And that's why skincare really hasn't changed in the last 120, 130 years. Because nobody knows the difference, and we only started to understand what we could do for the skin a couple of decades ago, 20 years ago or so. So if your skincare products were developed in the 1990s or before the 1990s, and most, most skincare products were developed before the 1990s, even if the magical active ingredient is somehow a recent phenomenon, the idea of a cream or a lotion and the vast majority of the stuff that's in it, that's been around for 120 or 130 years. Hasn't changed. Your great-great-grandmother did the same thing for her skin that we did, uh, that we're doing today. So you think we would understand, you think we would catch on that, that there seems to be a problem here. I mean, we've been talking about dry skin now for a while. Everybody has dry skin, but everybody's using moisturizers. Everybody, has, think about it. Everybody has dry skin, but everybody's using moisturizers. The moisturizer business is a $100 million business, and everybody has dry skin. It's like the same way with, with, with general health problems. We're doctored. We spend hundreds of millions of dollars a year, excuse me, hundreds of billions of dollars a year on medicine, on the medical model, and we're all sick. Or the vast majority of us are sick. Some 90 million Americans have at least one chronic, uh, uh, chronic long-term progressive health challenge, probably more. Same with the skin. Dry skin is a health issue. And like all health issues, it's about the cell. Dry skin is a skin cell issue. Just like any disease or any pathology or anything that goes wrong is a cell problem. Dry skin is about the cell. Eczema is about the cell. Acne is a skin cell issue. How many people have acne that, and they're just going nuts and nothing's working and they have to go on massive drugs that just completely shut down the chemistry of the skin in order to get rid of the acne. Well, why do we have acne? It's a skin cell issue. It's about the cell. All disease is cell disease. All skin disease is skin cell disease. And that includes dry skin. Dry skin is a skin cell issue. And the reason our strategies for dealing with dry skin don't work is because we're not treating the cell. We gotta treat the cell, and specifically, the cell membrane. The reason we're sick is, the reason we're sick despite all this doctoring is we're not addressing the cell. The reason our skin is, is sick, despite zillions of dollars spent on moisturizers, is because no one's addressing the cell. Most skincare ingredients, with some exceptions, there's a couple, and they're important exceptions, but the vast majority of skincare ingredients cannot address the health of the cell. If you're going to address the health of a skin cell, you need to feed the skin cell and you need to protect the skin cell. And you do that with, and this is from a topical perspective now, but it's also true internally. Everything that's true in, topically is also true internally. Everything that's true topically is mostly true internally. If what is true topically or what you're doing topically doesn't have an internal correlate, you're doing the wrong thing. That's why a moisturizer doesn't work because there's no internal correlate to a moisturizer. But there is topical nutrition, and there is internal nutrition, and to a certain extent, there's topical phytonutrients, plant nutrients, and internal plant nutrients. It's basically what you're talking about when it comes to taking care of your skin, topically, if you want to do it correctly. Nutrition and phytonutrients. So phytonutrients are nutrition. So just nutrition. Cell food, phytonutrients. The phytonutrients, in the, they they're more, have a more protective role. They don't actually feed the cell. And by phytonutrients, I'm talking about uh, things that are in vegetables and fruits and herbs and such. They, they can have a protective effect. Carotenes, for example, beta carotene can be very protective for a cell, for a skin cell. All the carotenes can be protective for, uh, for skin cells. They can protect you from the sun, but they're not going to feed the skin cell. If you're going to feed the skin cell, you're talking about vitamin C and vitamin A, period. Yes, it's true, phytonutrients and vitamin E can have a protective response. It's possible uh, niacin, one of the B vitamins, can have a, a kind of effect on the cells. Vitamin D certainly has effects on the cells. But if you're actually going to get into a cell and drive the chemistry of a cell, you're pretty much ta topically, you're pretty much talking about vitamin C and vitamin A. That's pretty much it. Now, you also want to be stimulating the cell, too, and that's where your alpha hydroxy acids come in. And between vitamin C, vitamin A, and your alpha hydroxy acids, you've got your main topical treatment for almost every skin cell, skin health issue you can name, and that includes dry skin. All right, we'll finish up when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back. What?
Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up, benfuchsarchives.com or benfuchsarchive.com. You can purchase all your favorite longevity products off brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got news stories, blog posts on all our web- websites, We've got videos, lots of good health information, and all the longevity products, and a join the team l- uh, link that you can click on if you want to join the Brightside Ben team for a one time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business and be in business for yourself. If you're an entrepreneur, it's an ideal way to make some money and work out of your home and help change the world at the same time at the level of health, the fundamental level of health. Just getting just getting someone on the beyond tangy tangerine can be a life-changing experience for someone who's never, who's never supplemented. As we've often said, the more nutritionally deficient the body is, the faster it absorbs nutrients like a dry sponge sucks up water. And most folks... Who aren't uh, most folks aren't supplementing, and uh, if you get them on a, a concentrated liquid supplement like the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, it can be a life-changing experience. Call 866-735-2470 for more info, or sign up right off the websites brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so we're talking dry skin, but really we're talking about all skin health issues, acne, eczema, psoriasis, autoimmune diseases of the skin. There's all kinds of weird diseases that uh, can affect the skin. And, and it seems like it's not like when you have a skin problem, it doesn't seem as life-threatening as as uh, as uh, heart disease or cancer or you know all the things that can go wrong inside the body. But it could be psychologically debilitating, especially for young folks. And it's tragic because it doesn't have to be. Think about it. it. In the wild, animals don't have skin diseases. They don't. They don't have uh, unless it's a fungus, maybe. But they don't have autoimmune diseases that affect the skin. Throughout our, our evolution, the body has evolved over millions of years, and the skin has evolved over millions of years to be perfect, to be able to homeostatically modify things, to adjust things, pull the ups downs and the downs ups. Like the whole body is that way too. But the skin is the most exquisite responsive structure in the body because it has to be responsive to the outside quickly. <clears throat> Excuse me. It has to be responsive to the outside quickly. So it's loaded, absolutely loaded with adjustment chemicals. An immune system. The skin is your immune system on the outside. It's a defensive system. And it's constantly growing, so it's constantly burning through nutrients. Nutritional deficiencies in the body will show up on the skin before they show up anywhere else. The skin is where the the inside of the body treats the skin as a reservoir for nutrients. It will pull nutrients out of the skin in order to sustain the rest of the body. To the body, the skin is the last is the last place nutrients should go, because it's not as important as the inside of the body. So the skin is like a window to what's going on inside the body. You can tell what's going on inside the body by looking at the skin. If you have a skin condition, something's going on inside your body with some exceptions, rare exceptions, like topical. You, know, you can have things like concrete dermatitis where you're allergic to concrete. But even then, your skin will be destabilized so it's more likely to have concrete dermatitis or gluten dermatitis if it's unstable inside. The reason we're not taking care of our skin correct, the reason we, ha- we have problems with our skin, even though we all take care of our skin or most of us do something for our skin, it's because we're not addressing the core, the fundamental nature of the body or the skin, and that's the cell. you got to get to the cell. Topically, you're talking vitamin A and vitamin C, and you're talking about stimulating, making things move with alpha-hydroxy acids. That's pretty much all you need. If you're stranded on a desert island and you can only bring three things for your skin, you're going to bring topical vitamin A, topical vitamin C, and then alpha-hydroxy acids. Everything else is just, it's either, at best, it's just bonus or extra, Things like maybe vitamin E or vitamin K or carotene, as I was saying earlier. But for the most part, it's just a waste of money. And when it comes to the cell, all all disease is cell disease, but all cell disease starts at the membrane. The membrane is the key. And the membrane is fat. The membrane is fatty. Sick membranes mean sick cells and mean sick us. And that's true about cancer. It's true about heart disease. It's true about acne. It's true about dry skin. 
All of it are cell membrane issues. They begin at the level of the cell membrane. And making sure we're taking care of that cell membrane nutritionally, as well as topically, but certainly nutritionally is the, is the key to everything. The membrane, the cell membrane. You can eat the membrane. If you're eating oysters, you're eating the membrane. If you're eating yeast, you're eating the membrane. If you're eating algae, you're eating cell membranes. And the ultimate, the quintessential cell membrane food is an egg. The, the stuff that you can actually see the cell membrane on an egg. If you crack it, if you, if you uh, hard boil an egg, you can see a thin kind of layer between the shell and the egg. Because that's called the membrane. That's the membrane. You can't really see it when it's a liquid because it's, it's sort of liquidy. It blends into everything else. But when, it's hot, when you, it solidifies, when you hard boil it, you can see that membrane. That membrane in a hard boiled egg is powerful medicine. Powerful. In fact, you can actually get eggshell membrane supplements. In fact, I have a new supplement coming out uh, probably in a couple months or so that's going to have that eggshell membrane in it. It's going to be a connective tissue supplement. And it's going to have eggshell membrane. Why eggshell membrane helps you make membrane? It has all the things a membrane needs. Now, if it's all the things a cell membrane needs. Now, if you're eating an egg and you hard boil it, you're going to lose some of the value for sure. But if you eat a raw egg, you're going to get that membrane. You're going to eat that membrane. If you eat oysters, you're going to get that membrane. If you eat any whole food product, you're going to get membrane. But the problem is we cook our meat and cell membranes. You, get, you could probably get some cell membrane in a plant, I imagine, plant cells, some membrane-like material, especially fatty ones, especially fatty, fatty uh, uh, fruits and vegetables, or fatty vegetables. I don't mean fatty fruits, but fatty, like avocados come to mind. <coughs> Excuse me. But you can also supplement for the membrane. And of all the supplements for the membrane, nothing beats the essential fatty acids, your EFAs. In fact, essential fatty acid deficiencies are one of the main reasons why we have cell, main pro cell membrane issues. Here's the thing. When we don't have the right kind of fat, our body will try to make cells out of the wrong kind of fat. It'll, the body has to make cells, and when it's making cells, it's looking around the blood for fats. If it doesn't have the EFAs, the right kinds of fats, the essential fatty acids, and all it has is French fry fat, trans fatty acids, hydrogenated fats, guess what? We're going to have French fry cell membranes. We're going to have potato chip cell membranes. We're going to have trans fat cell membranes, hydrogenated cell membranes. This is the reason why you've got to be so careful with the fats you eat. That is the fats you're getting and the fats you're not getting. That's where the, the, the title, Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, comes from. Dr. Uh, Udo Erasmus' classic book on fats. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. Back on the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. If you like what you hear, tell your friends. This is the show where you get the straight scoop on health and nutrition from a biochemical perspective, from a cellular perspective. Hopefully it's not over anyone's heads. I try to make it as simple as possible. It should be simple. Health should be simple. It should not be complicated. It should be fun. It should be interesting. It should not be overwhelming. You know, I go to the medical library periodically, although less and less now everything's on the internet, but I used to go to the medical library all the time. And I was always amazed by how much stuff we know about the body. Floors of, of books and magazines going back to the 1800s about cells and about collagen and about skin and about livers and about heads and about brains and about every molecular thing you could possibly imagine, but we're sicker than ever before. How can we know so much and still be so sick? It's because we don't know the simple stuff, the basic stuff. We may be able to elucidate the genome, the human genome, and figure out what every gene does and what every, what every gene produces, but that's not going to help us get better. We get better by doing the little things. We do get better by making sure we're putting the good stuff in and keeping the bad stuff out. It really is that simple. Good stuff in, bad stuff out. 
All right, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open at 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in just a couple minutes. Uh, I want to read a couple stories here first, so hang tight if you're on hold. From This is from the University of Colorado, Anschutz Medical Campus, uh, medical campus, which is uh, where I went to pharmacy school, actually. Researchers shed light on why exercise slows the progression of Parkinson's disease. For the first time in a progressive age-related mouse model of Parkinson's, researchers have shown that exercise on a running wheel can stop the accumulation of a protein called alpha-synuclein in brain cells. Alpha-synuclein is associated with brain cell death and Parkinson's disease. You don't need to know about alpha-synuclein, as interesting as that might be to me and to others perhaps out there. You don't need to know about alpha-synuclein. All you need to know is that when you exercise, you work out, your body down-regulates cell death. Your body up-regulates the health of cells when you work out. And this is so true. This is true for chronic degenerative diseases, but it's also true for people who are older and frail and weak. In fact, if you're older and frail and weak, it becomes even more important that you exercise. From the Journal of Gerontology, high-intensity interval training can reverse frailty at advanced age. Growing older may not not have to mean growing frail. A preclinical study has revealed that brief periods of intense, not walking around the block, intense physical activity can be safely administered at advanced age, and this kind of activity has the potential to reverse frailty. Even today, if you're in the hospital and you have surgery, they tell you to get up and walk around the, walk around the floor, uh, the ward, after your surgery. As soon as you can, walk around, get, get the blood going, get the blood flow going, get the muscles moving. Stimulation is your friend. That's true about the skin, too, by the way. Some people are afraid to stimulate the skin. There's a, I, I have a, a, not a friend, but a guy I know in the skincare business here locally in town says, don't, don't, he's a doctor even, he says, don't stress your skin. He says, don't stress your skin because that's too harsh on the skin. I hear this all the time from people. Oh, you don't want to peel, do skin peels. You don't want to exfoliate your skin. It's too hard on the skin. No. You've got to stress the system. You don't want to overstress the system. High intensity interval training uh, may help you if you're frail, but you're not going to run a marathon. You may walk up up and down the stairs really fast. You may walk around the block briskly. There's all kinds of ways that we can incorporate interval training, even if we're frail, that don't require intense to over intensity. A little intensity, yes, you do need to have a little intensity. The body responds to intensity to stress by growing. This is such an important, it may be, next to nutrition, it may be the most fundamental aspect of health that the body responds to stress by growing. Extra rest, exercise and rest and nutrition. That's how you take care of the body. Extra rest and nutrition, and that's how you take care of the soul, and that's how you take care of the mind. Extra rest and nutrition. You know, you can have mind, just like you can have mind stress, you can have mind nutrition. Information is mind nutrition. You guys who are listening to this program right now, you're feeding your mind. And if the idea is new, you're stressing your mind. That's That's why we don't like new, that's why a lot of people don't like new ideas, because it's a little bit stressful. Kids love new ideas. They love learning new things. You guys love learning new things. A little bit of stress, lots of rest, and nutrition. That is the secret formula for the health of any living system, whether it's your brain, your mind, your spirit, or your body. Extra rest plus nutrition. All right, one more, and then we'll get your calls. 844-236-6010. Heartburn medicine can increase risk of kidney disease. This is from the journal Gastroenterology. People who take proton pump inhibitors, that's your Nexium and your, uh, and your uh, Prilosec, proton pump inhibitors for stomach acid reflux run a greater risk of chronic kidney disease than those who take other, uh, other uh, H2 receptor antagonists, they call them, but other drugs for the same complaint. I, I say don't take any drugs. If you've got a, if you've got a, uh, a heartburn problem, you've got a food problem, and you've got a digestive problem, one of the best ways to take care of heartburn is to use probiotics, is to make sure you're on your nightly essence. Link your heartburn or your GERD, your reflux disease, to sp- specific foods. You're going to always find there's specific foods that do it. When the situation gets really bad, even water can do it. Work on the gut. 
not don't shut the gut down with a proton pump inhibitor inhibiting the proton pump don't shut that down proton pump by the way is involved in stomach acid production they call it the proton pump that's a whole nother cool story all right eight four four two three six sixty ten let's go to florida and welcome don to the bright side good morning don how you doing hi pharmacist ben thank you hey. for allowing me to ask my question i sure, appreciate what's that going? yeah what's going on um, yeah, yeah, your your program is the most meaningful of all on the air for me. I love oh, it. Thank you. I've never called before. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but I appreciate I, you saying that. Sure. The topic today kind of spoke to me because I have pemphigus vulgaris. Okay, got it. You're like, likely familiar with that. It's a yes, blistering sir. condition. Of the skin yes, and the Where do you have it all. Right? How how severe is it? Yeah, uh, well, actually, I, I'm asymptomatic right now. I, I, I'm on prednisone okay. and azathioprine. And, uh, and azathioprine. Milligrams. Azathioprine, yes. Got 200 it. milligrams a day, and I've, I've gotten the, the prednisone down to 3 milligrams a day. Okay. Uh, so it started eight years ago at 60 milligrams a day. So I've tapered down, but I can't seem to get it any further down. And I'm wondering if there's any Oh, there's tons you could do. Might... Tons you could do. Yeah. Tons you could do. So let's yeah. talk about pemphysis. Pemph- Pemphigus vulgaris here real quickly. First of all, you sound like a smart guy, so uh, let me ask you this. If you're on prednisone and you're on azathioprine, which, by the way, azath- for the listeners, azathioprine is used to prevent organ rejection after, uh, after uh, kidney transplants and such. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty powerful drug, as is prednisone. So if azathioprine and prednisone are working for you, at least symptomatically, I should tell you, by the way, you still have your disease inside your body, even though you don't see it. It's still going on. So if, if drugs like prednisone and azathioprine work, what does that tell you about the cause of your disease? Azathioprine is an immune suppressant that they give you when you have a transplant, and prednisone is a nasty immune suppressant drug. Uh, but you're using immune suppressant drugs that are working. What does that tell you about the cause? And, and don't answer now. We'll come back from a break because it's a very important subject. Thanks for your call, Don. I appreciate it. Don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. back on the bright side 844-236-6010 is our number if you have questions about the longevity products longevity business health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with we can help you 844-236-6010 is our number we're talking to don in florida about pemphigus vulgaris you there don yes sir i am pemphigus by the way means bubbling pemphigus vulgaris is just one of those diagnoses they give you that describe the problem. You think you have an illness. Pemphigus vulgaris is not an illness. It's a description of what's happening in the body. Pemphigus means bubbling. Vulgaris means common. It's a common bubbling. Common being it just happens to average folks, regular folks. Vulgaris, like acne vulgaris, is a common suffix or second word after disease in dermatology. Pemphigus vulgaris means your skin's bubbling up. It's really, it can be really bad. Did you ever have it really badly? I did in my mouth about eight years ago. Oh. That's when I was originally diagnosed. Oh, my goodness. That's awful in the mouth. Yeah, I've seen that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, you know, obviously you do what you have to do. If you have the condition, you take the drugs. I understand what you're saying. But you want to look for other other things that you could do that are non-toxic, that are sustainable. Prednisone and Imuran or, or azathioprine are not sustainable, although you may end up on them for the rest of your life. But you're going to be shortening your life and running risks for other health challenges as for several reasons. Number one, because of the toxicity of the drugs. Number two, because you're going to be nutritionally deficient as your body tries to eliminate those drugs. And number three, you haven't taken care of the problem, which is autoimmune. Your immune system is freaking out. At Pemphigus vulgaris, you probably know this, is an autoimmune issue. It's where the skin cells are attacked. Now, we've been talking about the cells now, skin cells, for a while. Uh, and we said that the membrane is the key, right? The, the skin cell membrane. And the membrane is the key to all health, all skin cell, all cell health issues. And skin cells are no exception. You, so it should be no surprise to you that your skin cell membrane is being attacked when I tell you that, right? Your skin cell yes, membrane yes. is being attacked. The question is, what is attacking it? Why is your immune system attacking itself? This is always a question in autoimmunity. You have a, a jacked up immune system, and I'm not going to get into the mechanisms so as fascinating as they are, but whenever you have a jacked up immune system that's attacking itself, you want to go back to food. 
Now, you sound like a smart guy, Don. How old? Uh, uh, and by the way, I, before I went to the break, I said prednisone and, and azathioprine. That's the clue right there. They're shutting down your immune system. That's why it works. Yes. Do you understand? So, yeah. so obviously your immune system is hyperactive. So if you have a war going on, there's two ways that you can end the war. You can, if somebody invades your country, right, you can end the war two yeah. ways. You can just not do anything or shut down the army, or you can figure out how to deal with the enemy, how to, how to get rid of the enemy. So he, what they're doing is they're telling the army to stand down. That'll work. There won't be a war. But the problem is, is now you've got the enemy problem. you got the enemy in there. You've got to figure out what the enemy is. The enemy has gotten into your body. Your body's a country. The enemy has gotten into it. How does the enemy get into the body? This is true about all autoimmunity. This is all you've got to ask yourself is how is the enemy getting into me to activate the immune system? Is this making sense, Don? Yes, sir. Fascinating. Okay. It's the food ingested. Yes, it has to be. Not because I'm Mr. Food Guy, because I'm not. I'm not Mr. Food Guy. I'm not, you know, David Avocado Wolf. That's not what I do. I, as, and I have no problem with people who do that. That's great. But that's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is simply the idea that something is getting into your system, that your body it, it has activated the immune system that has activated the defense system. You've got to figure out what that is. Now, if you're an IV drug user, that could cause the problem. IV drug users have higher rates of autoimmunity. That could easily cause the problem. Vaccines can even do it. But you don't have any of those issues. So it's got to be a food issue. You sound like a smart guy. I'm guessing you're in your 40s or 50s, right? I'm early 50s. I was diagnosed okay. uh, 44. Yes, sir. Okay. So you've got to know this, Don. You've got to know this because you're a smart guy. You've had digestive issues for a long time. Correct? Yes. Yes, now, I have. How do I know this? Am I psychic? Am I Miss Cleo? Am I a wizard? No. I'm just telling you how the body works. You get this? So if you fasted, your symptoms would disappear. But you can't, you can't fast. I mean, you can fast, but you can't fast permanently. You can't got to eat, right? So I would be fa I'd be fasting as soon as possible. But the idea is you want to see, you want to notice the relationship between what you're eating and your, and your symptoms. And the best way to do that is to start off with a fast for a couple of days or a Swero V cleanse. Get yourself on the Swero V. And then when you start eating again, I guarantee you it's not going to take you very long because, number one, you're a smart guy. And, number two, I'm sure you know specific foods cause specific problems. So it's not going to take you very long. It could be something as simple as gluten. It could be something as complicated as 10 different foods. It could be a digestive problem where you're not processing foods, where you have an intestinal condition. It could be any of those, but that's where you got to focus. The problem with the drugs are, and I know I, I don't blame you for using the drugs. I would be using them too if I had something that miserable. But the problem with doing that is you're still doing the things that were activating the immune system, and that means this, the bad stuff is still getting into your body, and that's shortening, that's accelerating your demise ultimately, even though you may have mask the symptoms. So what I would do if I were you is I would wean myself and, and do this with your doctor, Okay, I'm not saying to do this on your own. Do this with your doctor. Wean yourself off the meds. Likely you'll st the problem may come back, but immediately start to take corrective measures with your digestive health. Fast, okay? Uh, make sure that you're doing a food diary. Write down everything that you're eating and seeing how you respond. Go by your bowel movements, your gas, your bloating, or whatever your digestive systems, symptoms are. And then start using uh, things like the nightly essence probiotics, ultimate enzymes with all your meals, apple cider vinegar, probably you could use some fat, fat metabolism fat, or fat digesting supplements like, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, like a lecithin, bile salts, pancreatin, uh, fatty vitamins, extremely important. I would be taking vitamin A, 20,000 IU a day, zinc, 50 milligrams a day, ultimate selenium, maybe 600 micrograms a day, EFAs like they're going out of style, 12 to 15 of the ultimate EFAs a day. Do you get how we're working here? Yes, sir. All right. So foods and fats, that's your, that's your remedy to, or, or that's the approach that you want to take to Pemphigus vulgaris. And I, I know you can do this. Stay in touch with us. And if you want to send me an email with your phone number, I'm happy to work with you. Okay? Uh, I, I would like that. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for all of your help. Okay. Good to talk to you. Take care, Don. All right. Uh, let's go to our friend Elaine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Where you been, Elaine? Elaine in Alaska. Alaska, Elaine. Long time no Hi. talk to you. How you doing? Hey, oh, you know, not so good. I um, I lost, uh, it's a very long and painful story, but 
I lost both of my parents on Palm Sunday. The same day? Yeah. It, you know, my dad, um, it started about the beginning of March. He was crawling down in a crawl space. He was 82, started getting a lot of, um, like, groin pain, leg pain. Uh, he was having a lot of pain, and then he went to the doctor. They gave him a cortisone shot. Um, they could, his doctor couldn't tell me where. I'm going to get a copy of the medical records, but um, he called, like, March 16th, the, the doctor's office, saying, I can't take this pain anymore and he doesn't take any drugs how old doesn't was even he hardly go to the doctor how old he was is your dad? 82 oh and, my goodness and they uh, gave him a cortisone they, shot and yeah and that didn't help at all so their advice to him was he said i can't take this pain over the weekend so their advice was take more advil or go to the er oh, okay. and so it so then he was you know trying you know, physical therapy and chiropractic. I think they were well intentioned, but it it kind of inflamed things. What did he, and, how did he got? What was it? What happened? Oh my gosh! So he just, you know, a friend came and and the door was closed but unlocked, and um, there was a note from my father saying, "I love you." My mom, she had bipolar, oh, so he said, "I love you. I just can't take this pain." And he took a, I think they they think he took a lethal dose of tenazepam. Well, he just overdosed on, on tenazepam? I get, yeah, I guess oh, so they're going to have a toxicology report. And then my mom said, you know, forgive us. We love you. I just can't live without daddy. Oh, my so, God, Elaine. I that know. is awful. That's an awful so, story. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Oh, so I'm oh my to, God. How was that? Oh my goodness. Hey, why don't you will you give me you have my number, right? Yeah. Just give me a call and let's talk. Okay. okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. All right. Well, yeah. that's that was oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. God bless you. you. All right. Okay. You guys, if you have your parents, tell them you love them. If you have your ki- your kids, tell them you love them. Tell your friends you love them. You never know. It's just it's, it's a crazy life. All right. That's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.